Hi, today I'd like to talk to you about a setup called the Meroxy Bind. The Meroxy Bind is a system played by White which involves pawns on E4 and C4 with an open D file. Um, it can be achieved through, through playing White against the Sicilian defence or also from an English type setup and sometimes even a King's Indian. To get it from the E4 systems, E4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, D4. Pawn takes pawn, Knight takes pawn. And then either G6 or D6, we follow up with C4, which is the Meroxy bind. These two pawns here in the middle, and the Knight sitting on D4. Can also, can also get it from an English opening, which in which case, C4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, and then D4, swap and then e4 next. And from, from a King's Indian setup as well, it's possible uh, d4, knight f6, knight f3, say g6, c4 here. I'll just play a few King's Indian moves. And then instead of an e5, we play c5 here. White ignores this through castling, for example, and swap, and then you're into a Meroxy bind again. And I'll use this position to start with and, and show the basic the basic plans for white. Um, the the most probably the most the most crucial piece in this system is this bishop here, the dark squared bishop. Come, it comes to the e3 square. Although you do ha you do have to be a little bit careful; it doesn't get kicked. Um, the ideal situation for white is when all four minor pieces can stay on the board. So the bishop sits on e3, guarding the knight. The knight, the knight is important sitting on d4. You, you basically never swap this knight. If, if, you, if the knight has to be swapped, you swap it on your terms, i.e. by letting black do the swapping. And so at least this way you finish up with a bishop on the d4 square. The d4 square is the most important square in the system. Um, when you play your bishop to e3, you sort of have to be careful black can't swap the bishop off with a knight g4 type move. Uh, an interesting, an interesting, uh, I suppose, swapping manoeuvre, for lack of a better word, is is a knight g4 type system where black, uh, white swaps, black recaptures, white captures with a queen, and then black captures here on d4, winning the piece back. Um, if at all possible, you play f3, and this means that you're you're avoiding this um, this simplifying manoeuvre. Your other, your other bishop sits on e2, and although it's your bad bishop, it, it can tend to work reasonably well in conjunction with the good bishop. At some stage, you may, and this is by no means, um, by no means forced, you may play knight d5, in which case, after a swap, and you take with a c-pawn, the two bishops sort of come to life on the queen side, and can, can wreak havoc, although n not always. The other, other option, of course, is if you recapture after a swap with the e-pawn. And in this case, you'll, you'll end up with your queen and rooks piling up on the e-file and trying to attack a weakened sort of e-pawn. Although, although these swaps are possible, your preference should be to keep the pieces on the board at all costs. Now, knights on these two squares, if, and a very good move here when you want to keep pieces on the board is knight c2. The knight's good on d4, but if it's just going to be swapped off fairly soon, you'd sort of rather keep it on c2. And of course it can re-manoeuvre, it can manoeuvre later on maybe via b4 or by, via a3. Uh, at some stage, you, you know, you can even get a different knight onto d4. What's important though is keep it on the board if you can. Pawn often moves to b3 because your c pawn can sometimes become a bit exposed. But you have to, of course, you have to be careful of the long diagonal. Queen belongs on d2, uh, helping out the bishop and the knight. The, the queen's actually very good at keeping keeping a little bit of protection on all of your minor pieces. And your rooks belong on d1 and c1. Now. Gradually you build the position, of course, of course if black makes weaknesses such as this, you've got a very easy target in the d6 pawn. Black, if black plays this sort of move, you can try to get into b6 for example. Um, a move like this, maybe, maybe this plan works best. 
a swap and then bring your bishop into c6 via b5. Basically though, keeping pieces on the board, and I know I've said it probably three times already, keeping pieces on the board is the key to this. Your position stays good while the pieces are there. The more pieces that come off, the harder the position gets, although that, that of course depends. I mean, if you can swap your bad bishop off for, you know, for white's good bishop or perhaps one of the knights, then it's not so bad. And of course, if you get into an ending where where you've got to that structure and you've got the bishop pair against a bishop and knight or against two knights, for example, your, your position's going to be very good. The, the hardest thing is if black does nothing as well, if black just sits, and then you sort of have to build the position. So you build it by trying to induce weaknesses. Sometimes this can induce a weakness. Um, but if, if black really is not budging, then you can try a second plan of f4 and manoeuvring the bishop to f3. And ever so slowly, very gradually, you can even push the g-pawn and just try to squeeze black. Once again, as long as the pieces stay on the board, this squeezing technique can work. You, you need to make sure there's enough pieces on the board for the squeeze to have any effect. Um, I'll just go through another, another setup for black, of course, is to play, instead of uh, g6 and bishop g7, is to play e6 and bishop e7. That's sort of what they refer to as a hedgehog position. And again, though, the plan for white is very similar. Just to squeeze and manoeuvre and manoeuvre the pieces gradually into the black position. Knight here, for instance, of course, black will, will have that. But if not, you know, knight here, attack that d-pawn. Black will sit tight somehow or another and you just keep squeezing, pushing the pawns and pieces up the board and into the black position. Avoid exchanges at all costs and just try to work your way in. You, you won't win games in 10 moves and 12 moves, but what you will tend to do is grind people out. And that, that can be incredibly satisfying, grinding out someone after a long, hard struggle. Uh, good luck with it. Thank you.